here. In 2009, the Pentagon ran an economic war game. What would happen in a major financial crisis around the world? Who would likely win? Now, th now this was before Bitcoin, but there were other factors involved. And basically, according to them, the yuan would win back then. My name is Lawrence Friedman. I'm a science fiction writer. And today we, instead of talking about the hardcore science or technology and science fiction topic, we're going to do something a little bit softer, talk about social science, currency, and how the world is going to look like in the near future. We have a special guest today, Joshua Pantelerezko. I hope I pronounced it correctly. For the, the, the sure. second try. <laughs> Very close. Like it, yeah. Horseshoes, hand grenades, you know, close only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, that kind of thing. It's good enough, though. Okay, so a bit about myself. In addition to being a science fiction writer and an IT professional, I also have a degree in economics, and I did some reading about Bitcoin and other virtual currencies, and I have a little bit investment background in that. And Joshua, why don't you introduce yourself? So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joshua Pentelaresco. I am an author and podcaster. My expertise in this really comes from my own research. When I was living in the United States, I lived in Arizona from 2007 to 2009. And obviously during that period of time, the big housing crisis in the United States occurred. And that was when I asked myself a very important question. How does the U.S. dollar work? And that was eye-opening to say the least. So, and based on this and the fact that the U.S. dollar is at the moment, still the reserve currency of the world, but we're now projecting where we're going to go from here. Yeah. So maybe we start with what we, the discussion we had on Twitter a couple of days ago. Sure. Uh, the, okay, the US dollar has been the global reserve currency For, definitely from the end of World War II, but uh, to some degree since World War One. Yeah. Before that, it was the British pound and the um, Dutch gilden, there are a few currencies before that. Yeah, uh, in the past, currency were based on gold. In since the 1930s and definitely since the 1970s, yeah. currencies, especially the US dollar, is not based on gold. It's actually not based on anything other than trust. And I know that uh, the world right now is changing very, very fast. Like we have the war in Ukraine uh, that the US decided to put sanction on Russia. So. so Russia, uh, so we're going to get there. But first, I kind of, I, I sent Ron a link uh, inside it. So it's, a, I mentioned, this is where we actually had a bit of a conversation. This is where our, a little bit of our quote unquote, we started talking about Bitcoin possibly being the future. And while I do see that possibility down the line, I personally think the one is going to win. And among the reasons is what I just presented to Ron here. In 2009, the Pentagon ran an economic war game. What would happen in a major financial crisis around the world? Who would likely win? Now, th now this was before Bitcoin, but there were other factors involved. And basically, according to them, the yuan would win back then. And even, and even when in my own research is back in the day, the yuan looked like it was being prepped to replace the U.S. dollar as far back as 2008. Um, it has been, the U.S. has quietly been investing in China for a very long time by pumping a lot of money into there. China has been buying, a, had, had at the time, doesn't have quite as much as it did, had actually accrued a significant amount of U.S. debt, using it to leverage their own coin back in the day and then over time made the yuan very strong. If you look at China, if you look at the last 12 years, countries have been since the last housing crisis, they've been taking baby steps at this right, but they've been moving away from using the US dollar. Brazil and China made a deal I think in 2000, I couldn't find this or I'd give this an exact day. I think it was 2012. There was even a recent deal from this week I heard. Oh, yeah, no, no, it, but this goes, but this, I'm going to give, paint this in context in terms of time. This is, I think 2012, 2011 was the first time they discussed this was they discussed making working within just their own currencies, not even dealing with the United States currency at all, which at the time was huge because up, up until that point, if you were dealing with any other currency in the world, you were still dealing in U.S. dollars. The fact that countries were kind of quietly, quietly saying, hey, listen, 
we got the US dollar if we want it, but we can just deal in our own currencies. That's a, that was even this is this is the early 2010s. There have been signs for a very long time that they've been movement away from the US dollar. Um, it's it for a, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, the US the US dollar has been weakening since the 50s. Uh, once upon a time, once upon a time, when the U.S. was under the gold standard, especially coming out of World War II, there was a point the U.S. dollar was actually better than gold. It was literally worth more. One single U.S. dollar was worth as much as an ounce of gold, which is insane when you think about mm, that. I think it was something like forty percent. No, there there was a point, Ron. It was not. It, there was a point. It was better than gold. It was a point. Now it didn't last for long. But there was a point it was. Now, over time, that's deter- that deteriorated. And in the 70s, they went away from the gold standard. And it went into what is called the petrol standard we know today. And ever since then, the dollar has never been as strong. Now, over, in fact, a lot of our current inflationary measures now were actually in the late 70s before Reaganomics came and temp- fixed, fixed the problem. All right. And ironically, now that the, those policies are why we still have the problems we have today. And that's why we're going back to the old inflationary standards. But what's happening, what's happening right now is, is you're seeing a wealth transference happening in the world. And it's been, and the question now is which way is it going to go? Now the war game actually, and since I brought that article up for another reason too, it talked about how China would win. And this talks about the Ukraine, and this is why the Ukraine thing is very interesting. Um, China would win because of the sanctions Russia and the United States would do to each other. That was basically, hey, it would actually stand to gain the most in a situation where China, or the U.S., sorry, not China, the U.S. and Russia were in a stalemate. And Ukraine is almost like the perfect example of this, right? Because Ukraine, Ukraine has been heavily influenced by both countries and has been for a very long time. And a lot of what's happening with a lot of the actions both sides are doing are a result of those influences. Yeah, so maybe I'll add a little bit about uh, what you talk about. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the dollar. The dollar was backed by gold. Yep. Uh, for the, yeah. Almost exclusively until the 1930s. Yes. And about a couple of days ago, in 1933, a couple of days ago, back eight years, <laughs> the U.S. decided to confiscate uh, most of the gold that U.S. citizen had mm-hmm. in order to be able to print more dollars. Because back then, 40% of the gold, the 40% of the dollar had to be backed by gold in Fort Knox. Yeah. So people were still able to keep jewelry and maybe some rare coins, but most of the gold went to the government. Yeah. Uh, and this was the situation and in, until 1971 that it was kind of gold standard for be- trade between states, but for individual, it was only dollar was only a piece of paper. Individual could not trade, go, could not go to the bank and trade the US dollar bill for gold. No. Uh, what happened in 1971 was also interesting. <clears throat> yes. The goal in France, he decided to abuse the system. Mm-hmm. And he knew that the dollar was worth a lot less than gold, but the U.S. was complied to trade, at least for states, U.S. dollar for gold. So he just bought gold from the states, yeah. stole the gold, got four or I don't know, five times more U.S. dollar and went to the U.S. and buy more gold. And this kind of forced the U.S. to live, totally live the gold standard. And right now, since 1971, the U.S. dollar is... Backed, basically backed by nothing except for trust of people, U.S. Navy. Yeah, they did. The petrodollar was basically the U.S. Yeah. came to Saudi, Saudi Arabia and they told yeah. them we are going to provide you protection. In exchange, all the trade is going to be in U.S. dollar. Okay, I, th- I think there's another concept we should introduce here, and that's the, also the idea of leverage. Because this, <clears> this is this is impo- this is an important thing to understand here too. The gold standard is. And we had a little bit of debate about this online. But one of the reasons why I said the gold standard has a chance to come back, has a chance. Yeah, and is I agree. What, yeah, right, 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 um, is this. It's the stabilist system. 
because it has a direct correlation between money and wealth, right? <clears throat> money is not in this, and this, I think this, this is almost an important thing that must be understood about money. Now, I don't know a lot of people really realize this. Money does not necessarily equal wealth. Money is, as you say, is a piece of paper. It's a promissory note, right? That's what it is, especially today. So the thing is, if you don't have the gold, you cannot leverage your dollar, right? So the other reason, one of the other reasons they went to petrodollars is so that the United, so basically it would give the United States a bigger credit card to amass a debt with, right? You couldn't do that with gold. And this is why they wanted to move away from gold, right? But where gold, again, this is this is why. And I think that, that leveraging is super important. You can't leverage as much in a gold system. However, you can't go broke the same way in a gold system either, right? So that's, that is, and a lot of countries, a lot of poorer countries still use some form of a gold standard. There is a certain universality to it for that reason. And so when the United States went to petrodollars, it actually leveraged, it allowed it to create more leverage. That's why our dollars, that's why the dollar significantly has deteriorated in value over a period of time. The more promissory notes created, the less the dollar is worth. Yeah, and the government was just, it's called the M money supply, the M2 money supply, the central bank and the US government yeah. just printed as much money as they needed uh, in the yeah. tens of trillions. And uh, almost everybody in the world had, when they did trade it between countries, that had to use this currency. So in a lot of countries, including China, bought U.S. debt. Japan bought a lot of U.S. debt. Yeah, yeah, so that's, exactly. that's allowed the U.S. to print a lot of money, and the devaluation of the dollar didn't went uh, wasn't that drastic. It was something it, like eight percent of the year. It, yeah, it was only because <clears throat> it was able to spread out. But there's a there's a there's a finite limit to that too, right? Especially in light of the pandemic, right? In light of the pandemic, um, right? It again, there's been it, there has been more of an emphasis to move away from the U.S. dollar because inevitably it will collapse. There's not, yeah, right. If you look at history, all currency collapse. Yeah, like I, I came from Israel. Uh, if you go when Israel was created in 1968, uh, one shekel today, that's the Israel currency, it was equal to 10,000 pounds back then, you could buy a house. Today, I don't think you can buy a chewing gum. Yeah, no, absolutely. And a house is more than a million shekel. I think it's uh, roughly $200,000, $300,000. Yeah, but, so, but, <laughs> but if the U.S. currency, as <clears throat> if, it, if the U.S. currency today went bust without something to come in to fill that void, everybody would feel it. It would, it would be it would be an epic level depression the likes of which that hasn't been seen since maybe the 30s, right? Yeah. It might be that bad or even worse. Uh, okay, so I'm not sure if you want to go to my, to the money or talk. Have you heard about Ray Dalio and his concept and his book? He was talking about uh, the life cycle of empires and the currencies. Uh, that's typically a currency is say the top for something like 100 years and always almost always inevitably it's replaced by some other power that is uh, rising and the old power is declining yeah like he did his research from the spain and then holland that was a yeah. the commercial power and then british pound was the big the global currency yeah and and that, yeah until um, world war one or a little bit after world war one and now it's a u.s dollar yes and he have the same theory as you that are not entirely agreeing and we can discuss later why that the rising power right now is china and yeah. it's going it's may or it's going to replace the u.s as the dominant power on this planet and as a result as you said that uh, red dalio believe and i think you believe too the Thank you. Camera is. Oh, it's my camera. Is, is my camera? Yeah, sorry. Hold on. My bad. Okay, so the US dollar is going to be replaced, according to this theory, by Chinese yuan, not a maybe. Yeah. I, so I think the other thing about geopolitics that need to be understand. See, mm -hmm. now what I think Bitcoin, let's talk about Bitcoin a little bit, just a little bit. So this is what I, where I agree with you, and this is and this is basically why I disagree with you. 
I think Bitcoin is the dream a lot of people with money want. Because the thing is, you need to have a standard with your money. Because if you don't have a standard with your money, your money devalues too quickly. But you want leverage room as well. And if you look at what a Bitcoin is, the idea behind Bitcoin, it's kind of like the best of both worlds. You have a, a certain finite amount of these coins, right, that you can only mine up. However, right, you can also create new Bitcoin systems underneath all these systems as well, all these new kinds of Bitcoins on top of it. So in one sense, the supply of the initial ones are finite, but, you, but you'll always be able to create, quote unquote, create new money, new energy, new resources, right? So Bitcoin is an incredibly fascinating thing. And I think in the long run- I, I disagree with you there. Yeah. You can create a lot of other virtual currencies, but you can also decide, okay, let's, instead of trading with gold, let's trade with copper. Or oh, absolutely. Iron or something. Oh, no, no, no. And, and, or instead and, of dollar, let's print a new oh, oh, no, 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 no. Tr trade, I could definitely see a Pesos. world that world. I, I could definitely see that world possibly going that way too. There is a... So there is there a critical is, mass and there is an adoption. And I, I also not a, I, I think some of the virtual other... Currency like Ethereum and uh, Cardano, others have huge potential because they have much, much more utilities. They can do a lot more than Bitcoin. Yeah. But in terms of um, store of value, I don't think there is anything in any other currency that can replace the Bitcoin at this point, just because of the network size and the adoption rate. But but the problem is you can't. This is the thing. The this is the geopolitics of the world right now. There's two directions the world in general is moving toward. One of them is centralization. There's more authoritarianism in the world than there used to be everywhere, right? More systems are trying to become more bigger and more centralized in power. In a world like that, Bitcoin is their worst nightmare because Bitcoin is decentralized. It decentralizes everything. And because it decentralizes everything, a system, will, a system that wants to conglomerate can't do it. So I think there's, there's two forces at play here. I think, but my, where my opinion is, I think we get to decentralization eventually. But for that me, I, I, yeah, no, I, I think we do. My only question is how and when. And to me, it seems like the way we seem to be going we're going to go through a centralized, we're going to stack all the marbles into a corner first, and then eventually they're going to splinter in, 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 a, in a different directions. And I think when it goes to splinter into different directions, Bitcoin wins. But as, it, as centralization accrues, I think the yuan wins. That's where I, that's how I that see it. Be. Yeah, that's how I see it going. Again, I could be wrong. We're, we're, this is the cool thing. We're speculating here, yeah, right? So right now you just expanded the topic by about tenfold. Uh, the, okay, so maybe I'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah. The world uh, right now is changing at a very, very fast rate. There are some very disruptive technology that are going to impact us. The two biggest one that everybody's talking about is artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. Another one that is, nobody talk about right now, but it's going to be huge in a decade or two decades is genetic engineering. That means we can program ourselves. Other than that, the world is facing other problems like energy problem, uh, population, uh, and something that has been a lot of uh, the headlines is global warming or climate change. Yes. So in order to solve or utilize or leverage all this, so we have new disruptive technology, the primary artificial intelligence and genetic engineering that we can program new humans. So that's... Which has some... Um, let's not go into it right now. It's yeah, that's, 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 like, that's got some incredibly but, dubious um, But uh, the way to be able to control climate change and control this technology... And there are basically two ways. One way is like a pyramid. So to have a, some very, very smart people at the top, something like a world government or centralization. Mm -hmm. And they will control everyone and tell you what you can or can't buy, how much carbon you can use, etc., etc. Et that's how they can 
manage global warming and they will use artificial intelligence to make sure they monitor very very well how people are behaving and maybe they will modify humans uh, give other characteristics to the humans uh, like make people more intelligence more obedience and less compassionate less uh, so they're going to mo- may, they may modify humans and they will control our population with artificial DNA. And I think this is where blockchain technology and this our distribution technology come into place because the other alternative is to still handle all this uh, existential risk like climate change, artificial intelligence, but do it in something like more a direct democracy. And instead of one small elite at the top that dictate to other how to behave in order to save the world, we'll have multiple entities that will collaborate together in a win-win in order to achieve a win-win situation for everyone. And this is the distributed solution. I, I, I think there's a third possibility. And, that's, and I think this is the way we're ultimately are going to go. Again, I, the question is how we get there. I don't know. But small communities linked together loosely by technology and occasionally speaking together. And that's why, I, and that's where I think we're going to go. I don't, the thing, the thing with the first, the first point, your, your first alternative. Okay. That comes down to the integrity and transparency of the leadership we have ultimately. And based on what I've seen in the last few years, that doesn't exist. So that's already doomed to failure. The second, oh, it, they could be successful using AI. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, I think, I, no, I don't think That's so. That's no. like the Chinese no, Communist no, Party works. No, 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 but I, I don't think they can because I think this is why. Ultimately, ultimately, here's the thing. It might work for the Chinese because of the way they, they bathe the big condition for a long time, but the rest of the world doesn't have that conditioning. If you're going to, if, if I'm going to take you at your word, I'm going to have to assume on some level that you're serving my best interests. If I don't have that assumption, I am not going to cooperate with you. That's just the way it is. But what if I can control you? I but, know but everything you, about you. you. No, 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 well, you I can you know control your money. Let's say they then then uh, like then then the Chinese in China they have the yuan. Uh, right they, now, they, they, have, they have the social they have the social credit system over there. Social right? credit system, and yeah. you don't obey, you will not be able to travel. You will not be able to buy food. It, 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 in this country, I could definitely travel. I didn't say anything about legal, but I could definitely travel. And as far we, we are not there in in this country. No, no, no. But but in but we almost were. The Vax Pass had used a lot of the similar concepts mm-hmm. and technologies the social credit score used. It was an it was an it what it used a lot of those concepts to such a point to such a point that a lot of people grew uncomfortable with that idea. We're not going to do that here the same way. Second point, even if you okay, even if you decide to do even if this 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 technology in some way comes here because i do think it is going to one way or the other the fact of the matter is ultimately it, it comes down to this i have to have you have you either have to have such an overwhelming bit of leverage on me that i won't fight you right or i have to implicitly trust you i don't know i don't know how you could have as it currently stands the former i'm not sure exists here and as far as the latter goes, that certainly doesn't exist here. I think I th- I I think it's a house of cards that collapses on itself hard. I I don't, I don't think they I don't think it would last more than a few years tops. That's, and we just uh, dictators sitting in the past uh, have suffered from this, like uh, Nazi Germany or the communist. Uh, if, you look, if you if you if you if you look at Nazi Germany, if you look but, at if you look, sorry, but right, they. The reason the West won is typically because we had a distributed decision make, making when it comes to economic decision. So we can decide how many factory to build. It's, I want to build this factory. I want to build this shop here. While in the Soviet world or Nazi Germany, it was all dictated from the top. Mm-hmm. And there was a limit, a limit to how much that could micromanagement manage everyone. So economically, eventually, the distributed system economically won because it mm-hmm. had a better yeah. decision making at local level distributed. What it's going to cha- what's going to change in the future? It's artificial intelligence. 
but with artificial intelligence, a centralized authority, and if you combine it with the digit, uh, CBDC, that's a central bank digital currency that has credit, uh, credit score, uh, not credit score, uh, social credit score, uh, 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 whatever. Uh, I, I, programmable I think... currency that is fully controlled by the central authority and they can control all your traffic they know what you say you know what you're active in social you, media. you, you, cre- you create they, you can create a totalitarian style it could even be a nice totalitarian style like in brave new world but that wasn't that nice <laughs> uh, it appeared nice initially it did it, it, it wasn't that nice But because of the power of artificial intelligence and genetic engineer that could design humans that are more compliant and breed them in as a cloning or some kind of technology, and I, I think in a decade or two we're going to see this in China, a totalitarian state actually have a chance to be I, to I, I, to I, I still disagree with you. I think it just dies. You, you, what, you're, what, you're, what you're ultimately arguing eventually for it will die because it's not stable. Well, no, it's not. No, no, it's not. It won't even last that long because what you are arguing for ultimately is a is a, a scenario without. I'm not change. arguing for it. No, 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 no. I know, I know, we were projecting. I know you're not saying it's it's beneficial. I mean, when I say what you're arguing for, the end result would be an unchanging system. It would die because it would just eventually shrink and collapse inward on itself, and I don't think it would take very long. Right. I just I just think again, it's like putting marbles in a corner, even with an artificial intelligence wa- watching everything. It's putting marbles in a corner. That pressure sooner or later, no matter what's there, it's just gonna go the marbles are gonna go like this. Pa-ching, 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 like pa-ching. The, the Empire in the foundation series. Or or the, or more accurately, what you're describing is the Tower of Babel. That's what they, you're they could still control a lot longer than what the Nazi Germany on this. But, but me, I don't think it, but see, I don't honestly think it's gonna last that long. Like it, it it's one of those it I think I did you ever there's a video game. I don't know if you ever uh, you're a video you're a gamer. Did you ever play this video game where you're the snake that eats everything and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Remember what happens when you get so big? One wrong pop in the wrong spot and you go poof. That's what hap- that's what happens in a situation in a system like that. It doesn't it won't last. I, I, what I what I option two has a chance of going for I think that one has a chance of going for a long time, right? Where you have a democratic, I think a democratic like a bu- like a bunch of group of people making a bunch of decisions in different sectors. I think that has a better chance of lasting longer. But you need but, you still need to collaborate because but, but, with but, other system for to address things like existential uh, risk or like, so, like but, global warming for example. Oh, what what you need what you need is an infrastructure, right? They still need infrastructure. But I mean, just think about the other like there's other aspects of technology today that we're not talking about. And like what the fact that we're doing this. Now on a personal note, I wish I could have done this in person. This would be a much more interesting thing in person. But the fact that, that we can actually have this conversation, I have used Zoom to have conversations with people from literally every place on the planet, just about every, every place. I've interviewed people in Japan. I've interviewed people in England, Russia, Israel, you name it. I've interviewed them there or somebody from that continent. And the thing is, we can, we can from an infrastructure, we can almost not completely – But we can significantly reduce an oversight an overseer's involvement in interacting with each other because we have more lines of direct communication today. So you could actually you could actually create a system today of a bunch of smaller communities that when and if so that a bigger crisis arises, a representative of that community can talk to other representatives of other community and talk about their needs specifically. I don't see government being bigger. I see government eventually becoming smaller as uh, malleable as the communities it's in it is the best it would it, especially with the way technology and communication work today, those are actually better systems. One of the problems of the world today is if you look at our current government models, they are hundreds, if not thousands of years old in some places in the world. Considering the technology we have today, that's actually kind of absurd. Yeah, even the democratic system was designed for the 18th century. Yeah, exactly. The representatives. And- yeah, it, 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 it's no longer, it, like it's no longer, 
you can get you you have the ability today to ha- talk about someone's voices like okay reddit for example reddit reddit's better for this than twitter at the moment but let's say you want to know what was going on in a community in any part of the world you want to you could literally type that community up in reddit and you can watch it minute by minute by minute by minute and people can there from their address mm-hmm. concerns and things we have that ability to i think communities are going to become smaller over the period of time i think i think i look at the fact that the big city as we know it is actually an obsolete idea yeah if if you have a direct communication internet which, which, which zoom to, and uh, if, if, yeah. if if you can do remote work but even but again the idea of going to a city right to work and produce you can do a lot again you don't you don't again you can't completely replace everything you do need an infrastructure and there i will get i will grant you you still that's why you need a somewhat of a larger entity but you don't need the same level of larger entity you need something you, you actually would be it would behoove a lot of these countries to shrink their overall government and make it a more malleable system not not a not a hi i have a city hall and i have everybody goes there no maybe i have a small office in an, in an apartment somewhere or maybe like a floor of, an, of a building somewhere where we meet once in a blue moon and the rest of the time the servants of the community which is what the government's supposed to be are now in the communities themselves living and working there and doing things again do you think the people in power right now will Go along or will they fight it? I think this I think they've been fighting it since the pandemic started. I, th- I think I think the I think part of the reason we're seeing the way where things are going right now is this. The technology is at such a point right now. Again, there's there's two there's two big paths, centralization and decentralization. and both are yeah. pushing against each other. I think the pandemic, the pandemic, part of the reason it happened the way it did, not all of it, but part of it was because I think a lot of these big institutions and organizations realized that unless something changed where they were needed, they would go the way of the dinosaur. Because if you don't have, if I don't have to directly interact with the government, I can make a deal with you from here, or we can meet in person because we are, we live in the same city, but let's say, but let's say I didn't, let's say I lived in Dallas, Texas, and you lived there. And I wanted to do business with you. I don't have to talk to anybody else. I can go directly to you. Right. So yeah. why would I need a middleman? <clears throat> right. Why would I need the middleman? And the thing is, it doesn't matter what laws you put into place. If I can circumvent you and go, Hey, I don't need you. Then eventually you're going to lose all power anyway. Maybe, <clears throat> but maybe they're going to gain a lot of power using the new technologies that are coming along. It, there's always ways to circumvent those things. There's always new loopholes. There's always new circles. There's always new possibilities within the technology that are never expected. Hey, look. So do, we, do we want to go back to currency or do we want to continue with the centralization? With... Oh, 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 we, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll actually, we, we can tie this back to the Bitcoin. Like, like this, like Bitcoin is in some way, like is the ultimate, maybe example of the struggle. Again, from a banker, big government organization's perspective, it's a dream. Like I said, it's both fiat, but it also has its own kind of built-in standard to it, right? It's a dream. It's the almost like the perfect currency. But the difference is like again, when you look at when you look at the um, it's not a perfect currency. I don't know maybe it, I should it's, do a multi version much explain about money. So uh, m- money has three functions. Yeah. One is store of value that you, mm-hmm. you, where you can save your uh, work time, whatever that you earn, you can store it there and it's supposed to keep the value. Another another thing is means of exchange. I mean, you can go to the shop and buy something. And the last one is a unit of account. It Like if you, I don't know, want to see how much uh, compared to houses, which one is better, which one is worth more or less, you can convert them to dollars and now you know which one is better. So Bitcoin, I think it's a very good solution as a store of value. But given the the money you you have to pay per transaction, the fee, the minor fee, uh, it's not it's not going it, it cannot become a currency for mean of exchange for eight billion people. It it's 
currently it's cost, could cost you one buck, a few bucks for transaction. Give, so it's give, kind of like gold. Yeah. Send a gold bar. It's not as easy. You can go go to the shop and I'll give you a part of the gold bar. And, uh, well, well, well it, it, so or, or... We still or... need another currency in addition to Bitcoin, at least for something that is more stable in, in price. So you can buy things in the store and the price will not fluctuate like 70% up and down on a daily basis. Uh, you need something like that. And that the transaction fee is very, very low. Uh, but you, but I, I don't think that's... Store value, much. like gold. Yeah, Bitcoin is, I think, it has a lot of advantage over gold. But for... You need something else in addition. I... I, I... I think that problem is one of those things that given a certain amount of technology could solve, but yeah. I think, but I, I, I think, I think, it's, I don't think it's an insurmountable problem. <laughs> if you want a better example, but I mean, it, 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 you, you figure out how to turn Bitcoin into silver. Do you know why I said silver? Because silver could be traded with anybody. If you want to trade with someone expensive, you bring a big block of silver. If you want to make a deal with a farmer, you break it into a bit. This is what used to happen during the Great Depression is when when uh, things were tough and you wanted to deal with anybody, you didn't go to gold, you went to silver because as you pointed out, gold was too valuable. But silver was just right. You could go to it. You could deal with anybody on any level with it. You could actually, you could exchange with a farmer. You could exchange with a wealthy individual. You could exchange with the law. It did not matter, right? All it, all the amount you trade you gave was based on the bit you gave. And that was what made silver so it was the currency of hard times back in the Great Depression era, right? So, if, or, so, and the thing it, but the thing of it is, if you figure out a way to turn Bitcoin into more le- more like that, it works. There is, a, there is a solution right now. Yeah, a few solution. One of them is a Lightning Lightning Network that you yeah. basically use dollars, use dollars backed by Bitcoin, and the transaction is a friction of a cent. You can, uh, like if you go something, buy something with mm-hmm. a credit card for a hundred bucks, you pay three dollars, somebody is paying three dollar commission to the, yeah, all the middlemen. But if you use a ne- network, like a lightning, lightning network, it will cost you a friction of a cent. And yeah. be it, the settlement will be immediate instead of a month. Yeah. So, so. Uh, and another alternative is stable coins that are running on Ethereum or other um, mm-hmm. well, uh, blockchain networks. Yeah. And another alternative, it's what the government is planning for us, both in Canada and the States, and China is already doing, that's the CBDC, Central yeah. Bank Digital Currency. That was going to be very efficient with very low transaction fees. Of course, it's programmable and it gives the government a lot of control, but Maybe which much, uh, which, but... which at this point a lot of people are going to be very reluctant about more so in the states <clears throat> than here but very reluctant about yeah um i i, I don't think that go that goes it, 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 yeah. it will be efficient but it will give the people in power too much power without checks and well, balances well that the, the again this goes back to something i said earlier leadership doesn't have integrity or transparency anymore and again i'm not even picking on any party it doesn't matter what pick your party it doesn't matter um when you have when you've hit this point in your culture um the last thing you want to give anybody like that is that much information the beautiful thing about cash today is it, like the way the fact that we still have cash today is that no one fully knows what you have right and that is useful because at least in okay in the United States, what you what you earn is technically your property. Ergo, it can't be it can't be argued with one way or the other. What you disclose or what you don't disclose, which unless can you put it in a bank and the bank uh, gamble with well, it. But but again, it. that's that's a cho- that's that's a choice, right? But you don't but you don't always have but you have <clears> the freedom <throat> not to do that, and that's huge. Whereas you go into a completely digital concept. Well, there's two, there's two big problems with it. number one, the information you presented or two, if there's a power outage, right? What happens then? Right. Uh, no one can buy anything. And it is, I remember the last power outage we had here, I think it was about six or eight months ago. I had cash on me, so I was fine, but I got to watch so many people just not be able to pay or buy anything. 
consequently, my Starbucks was free that day. They couldn't they couldn't take any form of currency at all just because it was a completely electronic system. So I mean, it it doesn't we don't have we don't have the how do we put that resiliency that if something goes down, you can do anything about it. Yeah, right? Bitcoin is pretty resilient yeah. because yeah, you yeah. have miners everywhere in the, in the world. So if you have a power outage in one country, the network is still functional. And oh, yeah. Even if we have a nuclear war and all power on the planet goes down and a month But, later people turn on the computer, the network will be there and each Bitcoin will know exactly who is Yeah. To what wallet so but 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 again going back to what we just said but during that time of power is out no one's going to be able to buy yeah. anything but, so i yeah, mean if you, if you have a nuclear holocaust and the whole well no if we, if we go nuclear power, holocaust, power outage a global sized power outage then we have a bigger problem then oh no, no no at that point the power is all out like that then I'm then the, the, the most important commodity will probably be bullets no water still water It's still water by a shot if I, I'll come with my gun and take your water uh, uh no yeah I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell uh, uh, if you if you can find me if you can find me right water's the key water's key right now if you're smart you'll come with your gun and we'll make a deal <laughs> right now if you're smart um but no it's like the the like I said it, it's going to be very interesting to see how things play out in the next 10 years um and Like I said I, I'm I'm curious as to how um like I said I look at I look at like I said the Ukraine situation and I'm like okay this is a, this is another way to drain the United States of um I don't think any of this yeah, if, I, if I was a Russia I would be very reluctant to use US dollar now well if I'm if Russia Russia is in an interesting quagmire because I, they are you I, I, I well I read a post on uh, Facebook about Finland joining the the uh what the hell are they call it top my head other, like, other countries as well like yeah yeah you know the US government can turn their money off on a whim at any time they want yeah then why why would they use it yeah so but yeah they're joining they're joining like a lot of countries are joining NATO and again I I think what the other thing that should be mentioned what's happened now for a lot of this to happen the way we're projecting to a lot of the current powers and regimes that be have to disappear at least a little bit United States can't be as strong as it is because the US dollar can still oppose any of these measures coming into be and coming into place and um the Russian the Ru- even Russia because Russia of all the resources it has it too can actually say I don't want to play this game and It might be one of the big reasons why what's happening there is happening there so um it, it again so you do for so we're we're still a, a bit of time before it happens but yeah we're coming we're yeah, coming like to, decades I can uh, give you if you want some argument why Chinese uh, Yuan may not be there sure, actually you know what, 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 what there are a few but I'd love to hear like, but why don't we do this for the audience? Uh, for, uh, first of all, Uh, what is pushing now for an alternative to currency to the US dollar that's the BRIC nations that's uh, China, Russia, uh, Brazil, India and uh, South Africa and a few other including recently Saudi Arabia that decided yeah. to not use the US dollar for some of their latest deals <clears throat> well, uh, but some of these countries are, are not very good friends for example India and China are Do not get along. They don't like it. Yeah. So I doubt the Chinese would want the, sorry, I doubt the Indian would want the Chinese yuan to be the global reserve currency. They wouldn't. They may, um, so they can try to build their own currency that may be backed by gold. I think it would be better for them if it's backed by Bitcoin, but they, they think gold is the better, better out there. But uh, gold has a better track record. It's like 10,000 years back track record. It, 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 It's a standard, like they said, for all But, for all the arguments for it, it is the standard that has worked the yeah. longest. So given, so given that India and other players don't like China that much, they wouldn't want to trade the US dollar with Chinese yuan, which is basically the same, but instead of controlled by the US, it's controlled by the China or mm-hmm. the Chinese Communist Party. They don't want that. So that's why one reason why I think 
it may not replace the US dollar. Another reason is that China right now is have a, a demographic crisis ever since they went about 40 years ago, went to a one-child policy. Uh, they don't have kids. Uh, to have a replacement level, in, enough young people, you need 2.1 children per woman just to keep the same level. They have 1.1 kids. U.S., uh, Canada is also in bad shape, but U.S., I think it's 1.7. It's not as bad. It's bad, but not as bad. Uh, but China, Chinese, the, the China don't have a lot of people under 35, under 40. Uh, mm-hmm. The younger generation is, is a, more, a lot smaller. Yeah. So that's mean they, it's going to be very, very difficult to them to be a superpower once the people who are now 14, 50 becoming 60 and 70. They will not have that power. They will not have right. the population. They will not have the young generation to buy. The, most of the economic boom they had in recent years that collapsed about a year ago yeah. was in real estate. They bought a lot of houses and all the young people that are in their 30s, maybe early 40s, bought condos, bought units. This is now ending. So yes. they have maybe a decade before they lose the power unless they do something like cloning or genetic engineering. Whatever. I, 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 which I, I, I think, especially or in the early unless phases... Unless they can reverse the birth, the fertility rate, which is very... it's it, Maybe South Korea is the only country that is worse shaped in them. But Japan has suffered the same issue in the 1990s. And since then, they are in stagnation. China and... Yeah. Japan is a, has a slightly higher birth rate. I don't remember what it is. It's not 1.1. It's a bit higher. Yes. But so, China is going to hit a point of no return. Oh, yeah. This no. decade. Maybe next decade. Probably. Maybe. I think it's next decade. I think it's early next decade. Okay. But um, here... Okay, so I have another book up here. It's called The Energy of Slaves. It's the idea of when the other factors of the US <laughs> dollars collapse. It's basically a study of how... Um, systems of power have governed the history of the world and how we how oil moved us from slavery to what we currently have and why this is ending. One of the things that book talks about is actually ironically China and India. Um, right? Um, the resources both countries need to continue to thrive. The big one of the big reasons India and China don't like each other is they have the same problems. Right, is they have a lot of the same problems, and there's only so much resources for each of them to fix it. India, in particular, is looking at, has been dealing with desertification for the last 15 years. Right, they they buy more soil, they buy more soil than any other country in the world. Right, to replenish what they use up each and every year. Um, they're not as efficient as China, which is why I don't think they're going to win the ultimately. But I mean, they are the they are the one country that can look China in the face, population rise, and go, let's go, and and, and definitely push China. Um, but yeah, I, India also pretty much control the oil supply to China that's coming from the Persian yeah, Gulf, yeah, from from from, from the Pacific. They but can not block the, it from yeah, from yeah. the Indian Ocean. Yeah, from the Indian Ocean. Yeah, yeah, they coming from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah. You have to go around India, Indonesia, Malaysia, and then go to oh, absolutely Ge- geography or um, or maybe if... China is now trying to replace that by doing deals with Russia. They they they're also Russia they're all, they've also been doing deals with the US for a while too. So I mean, it's not it's not like again they are looking at resources here, but again, India and China are rivals like for resources. They both have a lot of the same problems. And again, there's only so much space to do it. But I I think, like I said, that's why I, I, this is why I said I think the one wins first, but I think it doesn't last. Lost some of that, some for some of these reasons you just said. Yeah. They only have they have, their shelf life is short, right? So um I and genetic, I don't think a country would want to use yuan unless it's the same um, problem as the dollar. But but you but you also have a, a country easier to manipulate. And another aspect that I haven't talked about is the U.S. sanctions. Oh, yeah. Especially in high-tech and chip manufacturing yeah. chips. The most adv- China cannot get the, right now the most advanced chips. Yeah. And if there is a war, a, there is currently an AI war basically between 
U.S. tech companies and China. Mm-hmm. And uh, given that uh, the most advanced uh, NVIDIA, the GPUs, China cannot buy them. They can only buy the yeah. second or third degree. Yep. They will not... It will be more difficult for them to win the AI war. This, but they, so this, the, the, I, well, it'll be difficult for them unless they make a deal. <laughs> and that's that, that, like, again, a lot of people see... Or take Taiwan intact. Which I don't think they can. No, no, no. They're not going to do that. What I, what I think, what I think, what I think is going to happen there is uh, there's going to be some kind of. Con- I look at big businesses like China, for the for a lot of big businesses like that, like their policies. If not, they're again the, right. So they're easier to manipulate. But you still, like I said, the U.S. still has a lot of say, and the U.S. isn't going to just give China the world. They're going to make China take it from them an inch at a time, right? They're not going. They're not going to go quickly unless something. This unless something going on in the world is taking more of the U.S.'s resources than China is right now, which is happening right now. So, it's we like I said, this this could be a decade, two decades down the road, and right? Two decades, China economy will collapse. Oh, would, there is a chance of collapsing. Oh, oh, I, there's a chance there's there's a chance there's a point of no return in their population for sure but they, they don't they again won't go quietly in the night either but like i said anything the thing that also needs to be said for us ladies and gentlemen we are speculating like the, the future the future is diverse right i'm um, and um like i said i i think i think um pers- personally for me i i think It'll be D1 first. Then it'll be then once the one runs its course, which I I which this is where I am with you, it won't be long. Right. Um the if, one it will, if it takes two decades to replace the US dollar, but China start to deteriorate in a decade. Oh yeah. But I, it will not yeah, replace I, it. It will become stronger, like the US dollar instead of 90% will go to 70% and the one go to 30%. But if they're not completely replaced, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Like, we'll see because it, again, it, 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 we'll see what happens. But I, 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 I how do I put this? Anyway, I, I, I think, I think it'll be, a, I think it'll be a stopgap, no matter how it goes, and then some form of Bitcoin will happen, and. At that point, it, like I said, I think at that point we will see which way it goes. I think Bitcoin is not... only go if we are going into the distributed end game. Well, I I I, I I I I don't I don't I don't think see again. I don't think I I think I think if it goes to the yuan, right, it, we're going down the centralized path. I think once we go to Bitcoin, once we honestly go to Bitcoin, it'll go the way of decentralization. And right, I, I think we get there only after we go through the centralization first. Because I the way I see it as it stands right now, people are gonna go along with this until there's until it hits a, a point like a point of no return. Will will be you will you be using the CBDC once it's uh, come out? Not for as long no, as I they... can avoid, not, not not for as long as I can avoid not doing it. I will avoid not doing it because again, it's not. Yeah, it's it could be very efficient in terms of transactions, but it just I I have the same opinion. It's just going to give the government too much power without checks and balances. Oh, I I I don't like I said I person I personally. I Which maybe per- they will be b- b- do it only for good. I don't know, but I don't given human that- nature. Okay, so the pandemic. This is, I, I've said this on my podcast. I'll say it here. The pandemic has taught me this, and then for good, better, and different. This is my mm-hmm. attitude towards any government. If the government goes out tomorrow and tells me that the sky is blue, and I look up and see a blue sky, I'm actually almost at the point now where I believe I've missed something. I have that little trust in my government right I, and i don't know if that's a wise thing but that's where i'm at right and i know there's a lot of other people that have a very similar point of view a lot of people trust the government i think maybe a lot of people do 20 percent. what 20 percent of the population maybe more trust the government in everything they say blindly. yeah 
so that's so 20 percent, and you have 80 percent. okay so let's let's go extremes and then some most of them are kind of don't know yeah and most and most and but most i know that just, trust in government that drops significantly in recent years yeah well again and it's going to keep and and there's no and it's going to keep increasing the exponent the more power government grabs the less people will trust them and rightfully so so i think like in the united states it's going to be very interesting to see what they're trying to do uh how they're going to try to do it hopefully not I'm going to launch a fed one in June, I think July 1st or June 1st. Fed it's, one, gonna, it's, not, it's not entirely CBDC, but it's like a first phase. Yeah, but we'll, we'll see how it goes because the thing is they have tried to replace uh, the American dollar with other things in the past and has been outright rejected, right? If, if the culture rejects it, then what are they going to do? <clears throat> right? That's, that's, that's where, that's where it gets, that's where it gets really tricky and dicey. Right here, I think there's more of a chance of acceptance for that kind of thing. There, I'm yeah, in not. Canada. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I too, like you, I will try to avoid avoid it as long as possible, and invest some of my money in the, the well bitcoins. That is, it, it, yeah. Well, like, that, that's the thing. Like it, it again. No one trusts it. It that's that's a bad sign. Like that's a really bad sign well, for any new system. That's a Sancho was saying in the, the out of war that a leader need to earn the trust. You cannot just people should not trust if he didn't earn it, and the government definitely didn't earn it. Yeah. So I mean, and that's where we are today, and that's and that's why, like, especially okay. I I think again, we're not going to. That is a good thing if there is trust with the government. The government can do stuff that is could be beneficial for the society. I, I well, assuming the government has proven it can be trusted, that's the that's the, that's the thing you have. The, it, it's no longer we no longer live in an era. I remember when you and I were both kids, we we viewed our government a lot more favorably than we do now. Now, when I when I was growing up, we had entered kind of the age of cynicism, the 80s, which was the age of like, okay, this this happy ever after bullshit is, it, oh, sorry. Can I swear? I should ask. I should have asked this before. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Th- th- this uh, maybe, maybe I'll get oh, someone ha- on there. And... No, so I'll tell you what. Ha- but, this, ha- yeah. this happily ever after BS that we were sold to as kids wore off in the 80s. In the 90s, things were still relatively... Prosperous. Yeah, that's when the Soviet Union collapsed and the yeah. Berlin Wall went down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, and and, and we, we there was there was a there was a time of hope and optimism again, but it wasn't this. It was tempered a little bit. The two thousands came around, and then and, and then Iraq War happened. The housing collapse happened in two thousand eight. Was that to, uh, the dot com? Yeah, the dot com. Two thousand eight was a big one. I think that's what the reason why. Bitcoin came into living. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. One, uh, one of the reason reasons. he decided, or they, I don't know. <coughs> yeah, no, it was come it up was... with the idea of Bitcoin is because of the money, uh, the gov- the money the government was throwing to save businesses that are too big to fail. Yes, which which today on the expense uh, of the taxpayer. Which today, I mean, heck, even in even in the last okay, so during the pandemic. Okay, the the Pfizer shot made something close to a hundred billion dollars. That's what it's made in three years. And I can and I think of all the businesses that went under in 2020, 2021, and 2022, right? Because of the pandemic and the conditions of that time. That is one of the largest wealth transfers in history. Yeah. Right. They did, they did some mass in the States. Yeah, uh, the, the number of uh, taxpayers it's it's not three hundred and thirty million. It's something a hundred and something million. So they they print about three trillion dollars. The government printed three trillion dollars, and yep. printing money is not growing the economy. No, nope. it's not making more product or services. It's the economy is the same. Maybe other uh, quarantine or something, but they increase the money supply, which means each dollar is worth less. Yes, and. Then they gave uh, each, so they calculated each taxpayer, they printed something like $46,000 per yeah. taxpayer. Mm-hmm. Then they get sent check to people, so people got 
three checks of uh, 1200 bucks so that's like 3600 dollar <coughs> yep but they put in 45 46 and the only people get let's say 4000 what happened to the rest mm-hmm yeah, exactly. And then on top of that, okay. And people so, are happy. Yeah, I got free money, but actually you lost a lot, a lot more. What was buying power and power. Inflation I, came in and so I, the I money think this, that you have the, the bank will devalue it. So. so so I think this needs to also be stated to the audience. Inflation is another form of taxation. Yeah. I it learned this to, in the nineteen nineties in university when it's yes. economics. Yes, uh, there is a direct tax that's the money they take from you, and indirect tax that they print money, and the money you have is worth less. Yes, unless you are invested in real estate or fine art or something. And we mentioned, I mentioned this when we were talking on Twitter, so I'll mention this here. My theory with the United States is it collapses like Russia did in the nineties, right? Which is they printed so much money it has become so worthless over time that they cannot afford the u.s military is still they're still able to afford and pay their military right yeah. but the moment that stops the country dies okay so you, if you go to all the currencies from the last 100 years mm-hmm. most of the most of the currencies including the one in israel that went become one millionth of what it was worth 70 something years ago. Most currencies either died, completely mm-hmm. died. Like you, if you're in Tsarish Russia and uh, you had the uh, Tsarish rubles and the uh, communists took over, yeah, the money it was gone. Yep. To zero. Yep. Uh, Argentinite. So mo- most of the currencies in the world went down by either to zero or went down by 99% or more. Mm. The biggest currencies, the most powerful currencies, that's like the US dollar, uh, British pound, they went down by 95, 97%. So in relatively, they were much better than all the rest. Gold also went down a little bit. Gold gold go down maybe 2% a year because there's mining. Yeah, well, there's mining, there's also, but the thing is with gold, there's a math to gold. There's only so much more gold that comes into the world every oh, single Oh, there is an unlimited amount. They recently found a new, uh, not mine, a reserve in Uganda mm-hmm. uh, that is worth something like 12 or 13 trillion dollars, which is like all the gold in existence today. Sure. And but, probably but, China is going to mine it. So. Well, but, but, and but, if you go 20, 30 years in the future, that we go to the asteroids and start mining asteroids. Yeah, we have. Wait, I mean, uh, well, uh, asteroid mining will be if we get to, if we get to that point. So we don't blow ourselves up between then and now. That's also a possibility. Um, if we get to the point of asteroid mining, we'll be like there'll be other minerals and other things of value up there that will but will be identifying in some cases for the first time. And it'll be very interesting to see what we do yeah. with them. That all said, and I was just gonna make this point with with gold, and then this is it. There's all there's a set amount that we always know of in the world. It always goes up and down by a set amount of we know in the and, world. And mining it is expensive to consume yes. a lot of energy. Yes. Like Bitcoin, maybe even more. Yeah. So it, it always, it always, it, so there's a certain clockwork to it. And that's why, it, 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 again, gold is the oldest standard in the world because it works. This is why. Dollars go up and down much quicker for a simple reason. Now, again, the U.S. uses oil, has used oil for the last 30 years. And as it's become more and 50, more expensive. 50. Since 71. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I'm old. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you forget how old you are. But uh, 1981, <clears throat> folks, is when I was born. So 1970s um, is like something went to Petro in the 70s. So like 50 years. It had the cost of getting one barrel of oil out of the ground when oil when the big oil boom was one barrel of oil could get you a hundred barrels today it's something like one in can get you five it is a significant drop in wealth right compared to what we had and that's the other as one of the other reasons eventually there will come a point with oil that one barrel of oil will only get you one barrel of oil and when we get to that point 
כאן. No, I think we are going to... We are not going to get there. Uh, we have other, we are, another revolution in addition to AI and uh, genetic engineering and space that we spoke about earlier, is energy. We are mm-hmm. probably going to have a very cheap energy in the decade or two decades. Maybe. I mean, maybe some of it is nuclear and fusion, some of it is renewable. Uh, ultimately, the sun is the most abundant that, energy source on the planet. And- that might be the grounds for the next world war right there because okay so the civil war okay the civil war u.s civil war it's all about that oil <clears throat> because again at that point the original automation that's the original automation war because when when the u.s when the u.s was able to tap into the oil reserves it was able to tap into they were able to replace slaves the kind of lifestyle we have today, the light bulbs, like hot water, something we take super for granted, right? That is all oil. The food we grow, the abundance of stuff we make all comes from that. And when we started doing that, we needed slaves less. And that more that is as much about that is as much as reason why the Civil War happened than anything. If a new system comes into place, a new system of power, a new system of currency, a new system, you have to – the older systems always fight this because the people in power want to stay in power, human nature. So if we get to that – again, even though the way we've used oil up until this point is going to have to change, the reins of power moving to that whatever that will look like in the future – that will come with struggle as well. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's uh, one of the reasons one why there is so much objection to nuclear energy. Yeah, because sure. in the 1970s, and until the nineteen seventies, uh, nuclear energy was very very cheap. Yes, and and the cost of building a nuclear reactor go up by a factor of thirty, mostly because of extra regulation that uh, was put uh, based on yeah. fight from organization. That got money from oil companies. It, it's it's why it's one of the reasons of why a car doesn't last doesn't last like they did in the 1930s. I all this all the way we've done our life up up until for the last shoot we'll mm. we'll just we'll just we'll just say a hundred years to keep it simple. A lot of that has to do with the fact that how systems and power have been governed for this long. How, like it has everything to do with. This is how it's been. How this has been. I mean, I mean, Hitler for mm-hmm. all all the bad stuff he came. He came up with a car that up until a few, like most of them, could still run up until about ten years ago, which is an incredible feat of engineering, considering it's a 1930s automobile. You could still run them today. The big your car. Could, could you, do you think your car is going to make it another ten years? Yeah, I think so. You think so? What kind, what kind of car? Uh, Toyota Corolla. Good Corolla? Yeah, Toyota, oh. the, I think 80, 80% of Corollas are. 80% How? of the Corolla that were made 20 years ago are still on the road. Okay, that's cool. Then you're going to make it to 50? No. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I don't think I'll keep it for 20 years, but... No. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just saying, like most, most cars aren't built to last that long anymore. Like again, we we live in a system where where we things are used to be consumed and then replaced, and that has been partially the nature of the abundance of energy we've had until now. No. Yeah, and that's another thing when we spoke about inflation. Yeah. And, uh, Currency that could be the base on the whim of the people in power, whether it is the central bank or the government. Uh, when you have money in the bank, you earn, and you know that it's going to lose value. You will buy, and you actually push uh, help the economy by cons- cons- consumer economy by buying stuff, and you don't want to save your money because if you save, you will lose it. Or you- slowly so that's uh, another reason that if we switch to a new currency that is not cannot be debased or devalued then people will have more motivation to save and therefore less spending 
for I don't know if it's good or bad for the economy. Some say it's actually bad for the economy. But it depends it on is... the economy. It, it depends on the economy you have. I, in, uh, the last yeah. thing that maybe we should talk about is uh, this... it could help consumer economy if the economy is based on consumption. It will help when people want to save more because they know. But, that. Well, see, here, and, here's the thing. And one of the things on CBDC, they can do, they can tell you, and China is already doing it, they can tell you, okay, well, your money is going to be expired next month. So that will force people to buy stuff. And yeah, yeah, but again, the economy. But, the, but that, that kind of economy, you're not. Like it's not a good, it's not a healthy economy now, is it? No, no, it's good for the people in power. It's bad for the people who get yeah. this type of currency. Again, yes. no change. A, a, a culture without change falls. But the, I did want to mention one last mm. thing. I, I do think the consumer economy is also going to go extinct. Um, I do. Th- there's always going to be goods. People are always going to look to do things with their money. But I think the idea of the latest fad or keeping up with the Joneses, for lack of a bit, like I'm not to really age myself here, right? The whole keeping up with the Joneses concept, that's going to go the way of the Dota bird. I do, I, I foresee, I foresee for, I think if we're going to talk about the future, I think a lot more people are going to either going to want to be in a community they feel like they belong into somewhere, somehow, some way. And their economy is going to reflect that, right? And I don't know if that's necessarily going to be a consumer-based economy. Have you, read, it, have you read the network state by Balaji? For the I haven't read. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't read that one yet. No. But uh, so he's talking about what you take, but uh, not physical community that are in a, a location, but uh, virtual communities. Like I don't community of science fiction writers ever in the world, but it's a small community or community. I don't know people. Who... I, I I don't think the virtual thing is going to work. <clears throat> I I I I feel we need that we need that connection. I I I think I think I I think so. I have a buddy. He literally was in Calgary until about four months ago, or but until like like last year. Him and his wife were looking for a community to raise their kid in. End up going to Nova Scotia, and what what they found there was um, what they found there was they found a lot of young couples like themselves that were starting their families and growing, and it's ideal for them because they're going to grow with this community together. It's a physical thing; they're all working hard, they're all in the same space, the same time, and they'll work together to help each other. I don't think the virtual community is feasible. I don't, I just don't, I don't think, I don't think it really is. You need a physical connection for it to truly work long-term. Virtual is great in, in, in like as an intermediary kind of thing. Okay. But in terms of an actual community, you can't do it virtually. But what if you have people that have the show, uh, show values, but they're living in different parts of the world? Then you go visit. Then you go to those parts of the world. And what if you have technology like the metrics that you are indistinguishable from reality? I, I I wouldn't want that technology. Mm. I wouldn't. Be, and also, I don't. I think it would be. It rejected. was a big thing uh, last year, two years ago. No, no yeah, and, and but they now just, nobody's everybody's talking about AI. Nobody talks. No, about no, no, AI. no. The thing is, two years, two years ago, they were they were trying <clears> to. They just laid off that entire thing because it was rejected. That idea was rejected. Whole departments of it are have been gutted by Google, by these big companies, because they realize that the virtual model isn't feasible. There has to be some act. We are physical beings. That has not changed. You cannot, you cannot, and as it's as it currently stands, you cannot facilitate that. Okay, the fact we're having this conversation right now. Do you know the one thing we haven't done that we would do if it was in real life? Blink. Eye contact can't do it you can't do it right yeah, do i want to look at the camera or at the screen yeah yeah, yeah. so you, you can't do it it's not feasible you can't there's little nuances of being i literally was i had yeah. um coffee today with a friend of mine 
And we are having this conversation. It's like, yeah, like why, if I'm in the same city as you, same community as you, why would I want to meet you virtually? Right. Because it's much better to have a real genuine interactive communicative experience. I think there's a very, there's a, there's a small group of people socially that get anxiety in this situation. I think especially in Canada, I think especially there's a much more, there's more of a tendency to group into smaller, smaller subsections of communities than say, I think even in the States, but even so you need that physical connection somewhere. And if you're not comfortable with it, I think, I think those communities, I don't, are built to last. You need that physical presence, man. And, and I mean, it's one of the reasons why I'm going on the road trip I'm going on. Cause that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for, I do virtual all the time. What, what trip? Oh, the, I'm leaving Calgary in August. And like I'm leaving rental? any, everywhere, buddy. My podcast turns breaks a thousand episodes in like July. And um, I, I'm, I might do a few afterwards, but once one words collide is done, I'm gone. Like I am gone. I'm not planning on sticking around. I, I want adventure and connection. And here it has been a struggle to find connection. So I've concluded that since connection is what I'm struggling with here, I will not struggle elsewhere. And considering what I have planned and lined up, I feel I'm very much on the right track with that. So where, uh, where are you going? Or... Oh, everywhere, dude. First, I'm going to be going to Vancouver. Then I'm going to be going to California. Then I'm going to be going to Colorado. Then I'm going to go to Pennsylvania. Then I'm going to go to Michigan. Then I'm going to go to Ohio. Then I'm going to go to back to California, probably for the winter. Yeah. Right? I I, the, I had this phase when I was in uh, my early 20s. After yeah. This, obviously, I went to Australia and New Zealand and Asia, Thailand, Singapore. I traveled. Europe. Yeah. That, that, that might be 2024. Right? But yeah. I mean, right? When I like, was 23, that's what I did in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm 41. So I, this is my greatest mm. midlife crisis ever, and I'm totally I'm okay with that. Or this is where I found to grow up. But the thing is, I think again, we all and this is this is a very human thing. We all see connection for what we want to do, right? And and I this is why ultimately I think this is going to go again. I look at my buddy who's in Nova Scotia right now. I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at other people I know in the area. And what I'm seeing is there, like the pandemic has made people comfortable in their isolation here. And I'm not sure that's, again, that's not, I don't think that's a great thing. Um, and I think, I think as people come out of their shell and more and more as the years progress, they're going to realize how much of a bad thing that really is. And, and so I, again, I came back here to tell people like, you know, because I saw the pandemic and how fragile time really is. Want to go catch up with everybody. That didn't happen. I've been here for over a year, dude. And I've barely seen anybody. And that tells me everything I need to know about the community here. It's time to go elsewhere if that's the case. If I'm not going to get that adventure and connection here, I'm going to seek it elsewhere. And there's going to be people like me that seek it elsewhere too. And that's, and, and I, and we're all going to find those communities. Do you have a second citizenship? Oh yeah. I, I, I'm an American citizen as well. So, I mean, I, yeah, I, I have both, I have two, I have both passports so I can go in and out as well. Okay, so, so uh, yeah, it's also, this meeting has been over an hour right now, so I want to yeah. s- uh, not wrap it imme- immediately right now, but start to wrap it up. We spoke about a lot of topics, uh, first from the, the mm-hmm. two big main issue is the end of the American empire and the expectation that the US dollar will not, in the future, may not be the, still be the global reserve currency. Mm-hmm. And the second big topic we spoke is about uh, centralization versus distribution or decentralization. Yeah. So my question for you, do you have any tips for uh, the viewers on how they can prepare for the world that is expected or... Okay. Yes. I, okay, the first, the first thing that's going to... Pardon me. First thing is, it's going to depend on where you're at. Are you in a big city or are you in a community? 
Um, I honestly think that if you're in a smaller community, you are in a better position than you are going to be in a big city. I think, I think big cities are going to go through the most changes over the next few years, and not all of them are going to be healthy ones. The housing market being what it is, I mean, everywhere right now is a really is a very glaring sign that um, we might see another housing collapse before the decades out. And it would not shock me one bit if that happens, because I don't think the current housing market is sustainable. Yeah, especially when people stop bringing kids. Yeah. Well, even even if it was even without kids. It's not sustainable. I don't. I. I think the idea, the idea. You know what? The, the the housing market didn't went up that much in a realistic term. It went up in dollars, but that's because the dollar was printed. Uh, but, Canada has another issue that uh, Canada was for two years during the pandemic. Uh, they stopped bringing immigrants. And uh, this last year, they bought uh, close to 1 million immigrants. So oh, I, 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 I can actually speak on that because I was doing an immigration store for an immigration company. So I was I, like from the Afghanistan um, disaster in, 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 <clears throat> Afghanistan, in Afghanistan on, I was covering all the stuff. The, it's a very telling sign that one, the, the, there, there was a number me and my colleague found when we were doing research on job growth for the year 2021, that almost all the job growth came from immigration and not from the people in the country itself. Yeah. That and, was, um, that was damning. That was incredibly damning. Um, I'm an immigrant myself, but I came like more than 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I'm talking like, like the growth came from people coming from Afghanistan, people coming from uh, like some of the Ukraine, key areas. Ukraine, probably. Uh, Ukraine, not at that point in time. That came in 2022, right? So, but in tw- that was that was towards. So what happened? What happened there was, um, like you got to watch the numbers. The pandemic has made people look at a lot of the jobs. I I'm I can go in Calgary right now. There's a lot of places hiring. Not a lot of places are paying though. And so people are basically, or or there's guys like me who are independent contractors that are making money now for themselves. So why would I go back, right? And on top of and on top of that, since I can work anywhere I want to, and nowhere is affordable now, I might as well just go where I want to. Well, that's what why did... I'm a bit, su- a bit surprised about Vancouver because Vancouver is even more expensive. Yeah, so. but 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 it's it, again, it doesn't. But the thing is, Vancouver's have been more expensive for a long time. Vancouver is almost an island unto itself, considering what investments are there. It's it's actually of all the cities in Canada, it's the most unique that way, right? So, <clears throat> um, but I think what's going to happen, I think what's going to happen, not just in Canada but in the United States, because their housing's gone up everywhere. Um, I think there's going to come a point of unsustainability in the housing market. I would not be surprised if we saw a secondary housing collapse. The majority of people's wealth, and I think this is an important thing to me, the thing to say here is wealth, not money, wealth is in their houses. That's and, a part of the tips. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. So this is the first thing I would tell people if the, Inevitably speaking, whenever this is going to be, there's going to come a point of unsustainability in the housing market. If your house is not paid for, right, you're going to be face. You might be faced with some very interesting decisions to make in regards to your house. Should that moment come, yeah. before that, or, before, the, or the, what should the moment that the mortgage is going to be renewed with a new interest? So. I would advise, like what I advise everybody is wherever the market, so especially today, <clears throat> diversify as much as you possibly can. Don't just don't just worry about your house. Worry about other areas of investment and resources. If you can invest in something like, I mentioned silver earlier. I'm going to mention it again. The reason why I'm mentioning silver is because silver is one of the very few things you can trade to practically anybody. Copper is another great example of this. If you keep it at home, not the yeah, certification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Copper is another good example. Copper might even be more valuable than silver because copper is literally used everywhere. So, yeah, you but you don't get, go into but keep 
bottles of copper in the basement. Oh, so, so I know people who have. I'm not joking about that either. I know people who have, right? Because, right, in terms of having, have some things to trade. Heck, even something as simple as chocolate. You can go to a Dollarama right now. You can buy like chocolate en masse. You can do it. Have something that you can, you have an excess, you can have a supply. And I'm not saying to invest, but people always look at, are going to look at, Okay, especially in hard times, they're going to be looking for things they need, some luxuries they want. Um, understand, too, that people are also going to be looking for to escape. I'm not going to say medication in terms of drugs. I'm talking medication in terms of books, videos, video games, whatever the case might be. People are always are going to look, even in bad times, they're going to expand. If you're a business person, if you're a business person, keep advertising, especially in hard times. Because in hard, because in hard times, Right, people. When they do get money, they're gonna go to what they know is out there. Make sure people know you're out there. So in those times, so right away, because at least you can establish your own business and connections. If you're in a small community, maintain ties to your small communities, your family, your friends, right? People around you. Make be have good relationships with the people in the vicinity of you. Do not isolate yourself. You're gonna need. We all are in this together, whether we want to admit this or not. Work together, right? No matter good, bad, or indifferent, is just a good practice to be in. What about and going food? Oh, food, food. Again, this depends on where you're at. This depends on where you're at. If you're in, a, if you're in a city like here, like in Calgary, hydroponics is a wonderful way to do it. Honestly, if you can do that, that would be great. Try to find local farmers. In a big, this is why a big city is going to have has its disadvantages. This is why this is one of the big reasons why I say communities have a bigger advantage. It is easier in some ways to get food in farther places than it is in the city, especially in hard times. Because cities are all dependent upon supermarkets and a lot of other things. Getting, especially a city as large as Calgary, getting access to local farmers, getting access to things that are locally done, are usually more difficult, not impossible, but more difficult. Whereas if you're in a community out in the middle of nowhere, you're usually surrounded by this, right? If you are in the city, grow your own. If you can grow your own food, hydroponics is a good way to do it. Use your backyard. Use your, use um, use what you have, whatever that might be. Yeah, I would uh, advise and, people also to buy a, a Bitcoin as a, some percentage. I know a lot of people uh, who fled from Ukraine to Poland. They had the keys, the Bitcoins. Yeah. Like well, again, I, I investments again, invest in other things like whatever that may be, whether that's Bitcoin <laughs> or again, whether it's Bitcoin, whether that's silver, whether that whatever the whatever it is, invest in something right that you can trade with. Bitcoin's good because it's universal, silver is good because it's universal. Yeah, so bit uh, silver and gold, this is something that people with gun they take from you. Bitcoin is more difficult if you keep some of the but, keys. In your but, but, but again, depends where you're at. And this is why I may make this very key. Know your community. Because if your community is together, it's less likely someone with a gun is going to take away your stuff. It's not impossible, but it's less likely. So... But right. you know the tip, and why are you so pessimistic that everything is going to collapse? Uh, don't you see the big prosperity that comes with the new technology? I think, I think, no, no, no. The, the, I mean, these, you, you have to again, I'm, the, like I, robotics I, and AI. And... Oh, hope for the best, expect the worst. But it just do it right. Like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, look, I'm not going to say it's all bad, it's probably not going to be all bad because I that, that that's foolish to state. I do see another housing collapse, I do. Because I again, I don't think it's sustainable, but I don't. But that doesn't, as you say, there's 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 other possibilities out there, right? And this is why I'm telling you, in, diversify, invest. If you have the ability to do so, invest, right? Whether it's Bitcoin, silver, copper, whether it's food, whether it's like new technologies, whether it's do these things now. Get yourself a position in these things. Some at least some of these things right? As much as you can, right? Things will change. Again, this isn't like doom and gloom. This is just be wise about it, right? 
Yeah, uh, things right. are going to change very, very fast, and uh, there's going to be a yeah. struggle if it's going to be centralized or decentralized. We, well, that that, but regardless of whether it's what which way it goes, regardless of which way it goes, okay. The the more the more positions you have in different things, the more likely you will find something that will stick. Right? Maybe Bitcoin, for whatever reason, goes to zero. I don't think it's going to, but let's just say for the sake of argument, it does. But maybe that invest that little investment you had in a company that produces chocolate i don't know i'm, I'm just i'm making something up as a go suddenly for it, it becomes the hottest thing ever shrug right and then next thing you know you're fine or vice versa right let's say let's say a food company you think is producing some really cool stuff goes under but you have an investment in a, in a in some kind of like uh ai like like we'll, we'll just say some game platform of some kind like no, I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm invested in NVIDIA that it's also in games and also yeah, yeah. AI, like uh, currently it's using the video cards. Yeah, so so there you go, right? You have a very good chance, and I'm saying this straight up, that something there will hit because people love games, man. Gamers are some of the most passionate people in the world. And and I, I say that with love because they, they're great. But the idea is the more you see, the more you you have to have that balance of diversifying what you have as much as you can, as much as you can, right? Whatever that might look like. And on top of that, whether thing times are good or bad, in, invest in your community as much as you can. In a, and the reason why I think in smaller communities are going to do well in the next little bit versus the bigger cities is that's much easier to do in a smaller community than it is in a larger city. It just is. I, I, or I, or I, you know, there's more people in the city. For whatever reason, people feel less. I think people take people more for granted in cities. And that's just something I've just noticed personally living, com- comparing the two weight living environments. Yeah. Right. But so, a lot of, a lot of physical jobs, like if you work in a factory that produce stuff, it's in cities. Yeah. Most of it. That's yeah. the more advanced one. Well, yeah. But, even even so, <clears throat> invest in your community and I, like know your neighbors. Where like understand if you can understand their struggles a little bit because if you know your neighbors and they know you, you will have relationships. And again, everybody's connected to something or someone. And I don't say that in like a use and be used kind of way, but understand that like this is how you network. This is how you work together to create the best future you can, no matter what. And, I, and honestly, that might be the best tip for the best possible future. We're in this together. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you online? So, or so you can maybe find me future physically. <laughs> uh, so 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 online, you can find me. Uh, just Joshi airs everywhere. I'm on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. You name it, I am there. You just look for the logo. Uh, I will, I will make sure Mr. Ron has the logo for you guys to see and find you can do that. You find me that way for my podcast. My books are all on Amazon. You can find those there too. Alice zero was nominated for the Elgin award in 2021. I have a comic book I edited coming up on Kickstarter in May. I will have more information on that very soon. And I also have a show I'm doing on YouTube for a client. It's called Healing Hands. It's a massage therapy education show. I produced and directed it. It's been kind of fun. It's been fun to do. Um, You can find me doing all those things. And as far as the cities I will go and places I will find be, well, folks, I will know more about that in the months to come. But I already told you I will be starting in Vancouver. I'll be heading to California. I will be heading to Colorado. Then I'll be probably heading to Arizona for a little bit. And then I'll probably... and. I will go where the wind takes me until I find where I belong, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah. I want I'll probably I'll probably see you at when Mods Collide Festival in August. Probably. We'll see. All right. Um, I will be doing at when words collide. What I will be doing there is for those people interested, is my I'm only doing one presentation. I'm doing a couple other pop two panels, but I'm doing one presentation. And the one I want people to come is called the freelance mindset. It is the mentality required to be a successful freelancer. It is basically the mindset you need to do it. 
I will teach people what that is based on my freelance career in the last three years. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll post the links to everyone that you will share. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you and see you around. We'll now stop the recording.